The thing here on the south coast is that we have a chain of some of the best wildlife sites in Britain. They're called special protection areas. We only have 80 of them in England, but they're intertidal sites that are getting squeezed up against our man-made defences. And when you do that, you lose the habitat and you lose the birds that go with them. And these are birds that come all the way from Siberia, thousands of wading birds and wildfowl that come specially here to spend the winter because the conditions are so great. But because we're losing the, the sites for them because of this coastal squeeze, then we're obliged as a nation to recreate some sites for them. And there aren't many places that you can do that. The winter visitors haven't arrived yet, but gulls and Canada geese have already decided it's a good place to live. Not all the land inside the banks will flood. Much will stay dry. Some will be tidal, and some, like the giant pits where the clay for the banks was dug out, will be permanent ponds. The sea will do a lot of the work for us. Bring it in over shallow land, and the sea will create salt marsh and mud flats, and all sorts of tiny creatures will come into that. So that the primary job here is just to create a landscape in which the sea can find creeks and areas that it can lie in when it comes into the scheme, and nature will do the, the rest. That's the beauty of it. And it's not just about the bird life. This team from Brighton University are tracking water voles, some of which have been fitted with radio collars. You have the 11 as well. You have 11 as well, okay. Water voles are disappearing more rapidly than any other mammal in Britain. The hope is that Medmory becomes a vital refuge for them. As the waterways inside the banks turn brackish, the team expects them to move over the bank to zigzagging freshwater streams just outside, which have been specially constructed for them, complete with the sort of vegetation they relish. A couple of artificial badger sets have also been constructed and there's already evidence local badgers have used them. Plants too should thrive, even on the shingle bank where now they won't be disturbed by the regular arrival of bulldozers. This vegetation that's on the shingle, it takes a brave old plant, a bold plant to grow on shingle and this is nationally important plants. Uh, species like sea kale, yellow horned poppy, you don't get this kind of habitat in many places. And once the maintenance work ceases on the bank because it's no longer needed, then the shingle can gradually roll back and the plants can grow and flourish in a way that they haven't been able to do for, for decades. The conservationists have been involved in the project from the start. Now, as the breach begins, a new life dawns. For us, it's almost like the birth is now happening. Uh, we've done all the design, we've done all of our input to try and help ensure that what the Environment Agency designs is great for people and great for wildlife. Now it's about to turn into reality.